Hi everyone, welcome to a new module. We're on module two. Hopefully everything went well for you guys with that first exam and you're kind of feeling more comfortable with how the class is going, how it works. And as always, if you have questions or concerns, let me know. And let's jump right into mitosis. So we're jumping ahead to chapter 19. And here's your reading, and I'm going to go over the key concepts that you should pick up from today. So what is a chromosome, and what is it made of? What are the difference between autosomes and sex chromosomes? What does it mean to say that human body cells are diploid? Compare and contrast chromatid, sister chromatids, homologous chromosomes. And what is the centromere and what is its function? Uh, we'll look at the major events of G1, S, G2, and G0 phases of the cell cycle. And then also the five phases of mitosis and cytokinesis. So, our question of the day. How do cells check themselves before they wreck themselves? Very important question that we'll get to. So for the pre-lecture, it's very long, sorry, um, but these are all vocabulary words that you should know. I'm not going to go through them. If you look at the book, it will help you answer those, but I would definitely go through these and know each of these terms. Don't, like, memorize the definitions word for word, but just know what each thing means. And, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started on the lecture. So before we start, I want to define chromosomes a little better. I'm not sure if it does this in the book or not, but it's not in these notes here. So what a chromosome is, or what it's made of, I should say, are DNA that's wrapped around protein. And when it's wrapped around like that, we call it chromatin. And so it kind of looks like this. When a cell is not actively dividing, when it's an interface, the DNA is just kind of strewn throughout the nucleus like this. Which, it seems unorganized, but it's actually useful when you need to find where a particular gene is to make a protein, and then also to replicate it. But, when it's time to divide, we need to wrap it into these nice little packages that we call chromosomes. So, if you were going to try to split this up, or replicate this, and then split it up evenly... When it's a mess like that, that's going to be hard to do. So it needs to wind up. Think of like winding up a, a, a mess of yarn into a ball so it's more organized. Um, that makes it easier to divide. So when we have, this is just, I'm going to say when the cell is at rest. It's not really at rest. But when it's not actively dividing, the DNA is just a mess like that there. And then when it's time to divide... These little proteins, they're called histones. I don't think you need to know that, but I'm going to represent those with those circles. And then the DNA will start to wrap itself around those proteins. And then those will wrap around each other even more and more and more until we have what we know as a chromosome. And we typically draw it as the shape kind of like this, like a little finger or hot dog or something. But that's a chromosome. And all it is is just this messy DNA wrapped up around the proteins and then wrapped up even more and more and more until you get this little package called a chromosome. Okay, so here, this is showing a cell dividing. The cell that divides is called the parent cell. So 
So here we have the parent cell, and then the two new cells after division are called daughter cells. I don't know why they chose daughter and not son, but it's fine. So just like parents having a daughter, um, we well, say a single parent having two daughter cells. Maybe that's not the best comparison. <laughs> Okay, so something else to note is that the number of chromosomes that an organism has is not a reflection of its complexity. So like a fish, for example, has 100, a wolf has 78, humans have 46, a tiger has 38, a carrot has 18. So you can kind of see there's really no correlation um, between complexity and the number of chromosomes. I think a fern plant has, this might have been from the book, like a thousand something chromosomes. So, all right, let's make sure we understand the difference between diploid and haploid. So diploid, the way we abbreviate that is 2N. Di means two. And so this is two of each type of chromosome present in the nucleus. So when we have two of each type of chromosome, present in the nucleus. Gonna add another bullet point here. One of those came from mom. And the other from dad. Of course, this is, this is if we are referring to humans. Haploid, on the other hand, is when one of each chromosome are present in the nu nucleus. So if you think haploid, I, I see that HA and think half. It has half the number of chromosomes as a diploid, which is 2N. Haploid we represent with N. And they are from either mom or dad, but not both. And these are necessary for sexual reproduction. So the haploid cells that you will find in a human are called gametes, it's the eggs and sperm. So we have an egg here, and it's haploid, it's N, sorry about the glare, and then we have a sperm cell, also N, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Obviously these are not to scale, but with those together, when fertilization occurs, you know you now have a full set of diploid chromosomes, so you will have two N, so two of each type of chromosome in the nucleus, one from mom, one from dad, to make a person. That's what that's supposed to be.
All right, so let's look at the mitotic spindle. And I should mention here, too, something called a karyotype. I don't have a picture, um, but if you Google it, you can see what a karyotype is. Basically, it's just a, a picture of all of the chromosomes from um, an organism. So in humans, for example, if they are concerned about some sort of genetic disorder, they might take some of the... Uh, do a process called amniocentesis and take out some of the amniotic fluid and analyze the chromosomes from the cells. And um, there should be 46, 32 pairs. Wait, am I mathing right? Oh my gosh, what's 46 divided by 2? 23 pairs. It's been a long day. 23 pairs, okay. And if you are either missing or have extra of any of those chromosomes, it can result in some genetic disorders. So, um, yeah, look up a karyotype and just see what it looks like. And for humans, you'll see that there are two chromosomes. And does it define later the autism versus the sex chromosome? No, it does not. So let's add on here somewhere. Sorry, we're going to find some space here. Autosomes. Are um, the chromosomes that code for, like, all of your traits. And you have 22 pairs of these. So 44, right? If I can math today. And then you have sex chromosomes. You have one pair. And this determines your biological sex. So XX would be female. On the space, I'll just put an F and XY is male. All right, so most of your chromosomes code for your traits, and then you have that one pair of sex chromosomes that determines your biological sex, either XX or XY. And there are some chromosomal disorders where um, individuals will have like a triple X, or I think XXY is one of them as well. Um, but those result in genetic disorders, and um, typically you should have one pair of sex chromosomes, XX or XY. Okay, my apologies. I feel like I'm all over the place. The mitotic spindle, the function is to assemble spindle fibers, which will attach to the central mirror of chromosomes to pull them apart during mitosis and meiosis. So um, when you have a pair of chromosomes, they're connected here by something in the center called a centromere. So the mitotic spindle will attach to that centromere of the chromosomes to pull them apart during mitosis and meiosis. And meiosis is our next lecture, and it is different and a little more complicated than meiosis. And whoever named them, I'm sure there's a reason, something so similar, um, not very nice. But mitosis and meiosis are different, but let's write down this function. Assemble spindle fibers. which will attach to centromere of chromosomes to pull them apart.
during mitosis, which is what we're talking about today, and meiosis, which we'll talk about next time. And the components, what it's made up of, are spindle fibers. Which are made of microtubules, which we talked about in our cells. And so here in this picture, you can see the spindle fibers. We call this the mitotic spindle. And then here is the centromere. Um, these are the chromosomes lined up along the middle. And then the spindle fibers are attaching to the centromere to get ready to pull them apart. All right, so that's your background info there. Let's get into mitosis now. Mitosis is a form of... Um, asexual reproduction. So, um, there are two types of reproduction, generally speaking, sexual, which, which requires two people, um, two individuals, should I say, and asexual, which only requires one. So, for example, things like a paramecium can undergo asexual reproduction. They just make a copy of its DNA. The cell splits in two, like you'll see and then you have two identical offspring. So this creates two identical daughter cells. And those daughter cells are diploid. Let's remember di means two, and that refers to the number of uh, sets of chromosomes. So this is 2N for diploid. And it serves in the human body three main purposes, growth, repair, and replacement. So if you look at a newborn baby, you're obviously not the size of a, new a newborn baby. You have grown. And to grow, you need more cells. So, um, more cells made as the organism grows. Repair. Your body is going to be damaged during your lifetime. You're going to get paper cuts. You're going to get scrapes or maybe even worse. I was going down the really steep hill on Hellhole Canyon, if you know what I'm talking about, on an electric scooter and didn't realize it had a foot brake. So I bailed off the scooter and slid my skin down the gravel on the side of the road. And so my poor little skin cells were undergoing a lot of repair, a lot of mitosis. Um, and so these repair damaged cells, I highly recommend not riding e-scooters, electric scooters, and especially don't go down the steep hill if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, replace. Um, this is to replace lost cells or cells that can't be fixed. So examples, again, skin cells, you get a cut, you're going to need to heal and uh, replace those damaged skin cells, your red blood cells, and also bone cells as your body grows. Um, 
just a side note, white blood cells and also skeletal muscle cells do not continuously undergo mitosis like other cells in the body. So take a note of this here. White blood cells and skeletal muscle cells. I'm just going to do a no sign. They don't continuously undergo mitosis. You may ask why. I don't know the answer to that. That's something I should look up. All right, so that's what mitosis is. It's used in asexual reproduction. The daughter cells are identical, and they're going to be diploid, 2N, two sets of chromosomes in the nucleus. And let's get into the phases of mitosis. So if you remember PMAT, that's an acronym, I guess, to help you remember the order of the, the phases of mitosis. So prophase is the first one. And this is when the nuclear envelope dissolves. So if you remember back to cells, you have this nuclear envelope that surrounds the nucleus that contains all that, um, that messy DNA. And if you're going to replicate it and split it, you've, you've got to break up that nuclear envelope. So this is important to know. The nuclear envelope dissolves. And then the chromatin, all this mess in here, needs to start to condense to form chromosomes, those organized packages, so we can divide them. And for the test, pay attention to what the chromosomes are doing on these steps. So here we don't have chromosomes yet, but they're condensing to start to form those chromosomes. And the mitotic spindle forms. So it's getting ready to help pull those apart. Here are your mitotic spindles here to start to form. And next we have pro-metaphase. Pro means before metaphase. So this kind of happened is a little step in between before metaphase happens. The spindle fibers attach to the centromeres. So that little center part of the chromosome there, the spindle fibers are going to come attached to that and grab onto it because eventually what they're going to do is pull this apart and split those two sister chromatids apart from each other. Okay, next we've got metaphase, PMAT, metaphase. And I like to think of M, metaphase middle. That's how I remember it. So the chromosomes are aligned at the cell's equator. Or in other words, down the middle. You can see them lining up along the middle. Um, we got those, um, those spindle fibers attaching to the centromere, so they're getting ready to pull them apart. Which brings us to our next step in the process in PMAT, A for anaphase. So this is when the sister chromatids are pulled apart by the attached spindle fibers.
And so I think A for a part. So and my uh metaphase they line up in the middle, anaphase they pull apart. And also when I look at pictures of this, I I see little A shapes here as those sister chromatids are getting pulled apart. And so I mean, that's how I always remembered it, if that helps at all. So now they're separating the sister chromatids in anaphase. And telophase is the last step of mitosis, not of cell division, but of mitosis. And cr the chromosomes are at opposite poles, meaning opposite ends from each other. So you can see that starting to happen here. The chromosomes are split up. They're on opposite poles, opposite sides. The mitotic spindle is broken down. So it's no longer needed. It's done its job. It's pulled those sister chromatids apart. And you can see the nuclear envelope starting to reform around the DNA. And the chromosomes go ahead and unwind back into chromos chromatin, that messy, messed up ball of, ball of yarn. All right, so now we've got our sister chromatids separated. Um, we can start to form a new nuclear envelope. The mitotic spindles can go away. Um, and the, those chromosomes can start to unwind back into their resting state of chromatin. The last part is called cytokinesis. So know that when we refer to mitosis and PMAT, you'll notice cytokinesis was not part of that. Um, that's referring to the division of the nuclear material and cytokinesis, cyto means cell, is just referring to the splitting of the rest of the cell. You've got to um, split up the cytoplasm here and the, or the other organelles. So the cyto cytoplasm pinches off to form two identical daughter cells. And now you have your two daughter cells that are identical to the parent. So, looking back now, I should have done this first. Um, we went over mitosis, and again, that's just the, the division of the genetic material. But there's an entire cell cycle, so I'm just going to write that up here. And what this is showing is the cell cycle. So the cell spends most of its time in something called interphase, which we didn't mention in mitosis in PMAP because it's not the it's not part of the the genetic material dividing. But we start here with G1, and this is during all of interphase, which is all the way around here. And I think that the number is the cell spends like 90% of its time in interphase. Um, you can think of it two ways. It's preparing to divide, but it's also just doing what it its normal functions are to do as a cell. It's just chilling as a regular cell, doing its thing, performing its functions.
but at the same time getting ready to divide. So in G1, the growth phase, um, you're going to see the cell gro growing, like you would say, getting bigger. It's going to start replicating some of the organelles, like the mitochondria um, and ribosomes, so they can be evenly split between the two new daughter cells. And then the S part of interphase is when we replicate the DNA. All right, so if we're going to have two identical diploid daughter cells, we need to replicate and copy all of the DNA so each daughter cell can get a set of that DNA. So during the S phase, the S portion of interphase is when that happens. And we still are continuing the growth. And then the G2 phase is when there's still growth going on and it does the final preparations for division because right here is where mitosis starts. The PMAT. So you can see prophase and then the prometaphase we talked about, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And then last of all, very last step in the cell cycle, is cytokinesis, where we split up the rest of the contents of the cell, the cytoplasm, the organelles, all of that. So during this cycle, there are some checkpoints when the cell is going to make sure it's okay to divide because um, there are quite a few things that could go wrong if there are issues with the DNA or the chromosomes or or whatnot, it can result in cancer. So all cancer is essentially is uncontrolled cell division. The cells aren't getting the, the message to stop dividing. And so they keep going through mitosis over and over, and that's how you can form um, tumors, how tumors can form. And also if the well let's just let's just answer the question. Okay. How do cells check themselves before they wreck themselves? At the G1 part. So that's right here, the very, we'll call it the beginning of the cell cycle. Um, there's a little checkpoint where the cell kind of checks itself to see, is the cell okay to divide? Is everything functioning properly? Um, is it a, a normal cell? And G2... So between G1 and G2 is when the DNA replicates. The cell needs to check, did my DNA replicate correctly? Which is very important because if it hasn't, then you're not going to get two identical daughter cells, um, which could result in non-functioning cells. And then finally, M, during mitosis, and particularly during metaphase, are my chromosomes attached to the spindle? All right, so it's important that they grab onto um, that centromere so it can evenly pull the two sister chromatids apart. If it's not attached properly and that's not going to happen, um, then the cell can uh, arrest the cell cycle, pause it. And also um, something that was in the, the pre-lab, it talked about apoptosis, which is a programmed cell death. And you don't necessarily need to write this down because you have it in your pre-lab. Um, but if there is something wrong with the cell, a lot of times they will undergo apoptosis. And I have always, the part pop has stood up, out to me and I just picture the cell like, oh no, something's not right. We, we got to self-destruct and they pop and, and program cell death. And then that 
um, cell can't divide and pass on its whatever issues that it has. So, all right, that is it for mitosis. Just in one last quick review, and sorry for my poor image here, um, but the entire cell cycle, remember most of the time is spent in interface here where the cell is growing, um, where it's carrying it, it out its regular functions, where the DNA makes a copy of itself so the daughter cells can get two identical copies of the DNA. And then G2, more growth and final preparations for division. We've got a checkpoint um, here. Is the cell okay to divide? We've got a checkpoint here. Did the DNA replicate correctly during the S phase? And then we've got mitosis, where the genetic material actually splits. Prophase, we've got to condense into chromosomes. Attach those spindle fibers and the mitotic spindles begin to form. We've got metaphase where the chromosomes line, line up along the middle. Um, we've got anaphase where the sister chromatids are pulled apart. Telophase where they are now at opposite ends of the two new daughter cells and the nuclear envelope starts to reform around that DNA and they condense, start condensing, or um, sorry, unraveling into chromatin. And then finally, we have to split the rest of the cell in the contents, which is cytokinesis, and then the cell starts the cycle over again. Over and over and over in this beautiful cell cycle. Don't forget PMAT for mitosis. Don't forget to pay attention to what the chromosomes are doing during those phases. Um, let me look at our concepts, make sure we covered everything. Um, yes, I think we are good. So, uh, as always, uh, email me or message me here on Canvas with questions that you have. And we'll see you next time for some meiosis. Bye, guys.